Hello guys and gals, me Muda, and today we're going to look at Final Fantasy XV, Game of War, A New Empire, whatever the hell you want to call it. You might be wondering, Muda, why the fuck are you going to cover a mobile game this time? Well, there's multiple reasons, because y'all know I'm a big Final Fantasy fan, I, I play Final Fantasy, you know, I, I consider myself a, a somewhat expert of the Final Fantasy games, I, I like them, I play them, and I, I definitely grew up with them my entire life. Why am I talking about mobile games? Because I like to dabble myself in some real shit and just see exactly what uh, what what treasure troves we can find or actual nuggets of shit in this file in the, in this vile festering world of Apple's App Store's top ranking charts. So, for those of you who don't know, fucking Mobile Zone, what is it like a uh, Machine Zone, Epic War LLC, Epic Action LLC, they make a new company for every game has decided to dabble in the world of free-to-play games. Actually, no, not dabble. They've perfected, ladies and gentlemen, the art of the free-to-play cancer. These are people who are responsible for creating the games that have the absolute amazing... I I'm telling you, this is like top-tier level shit, Navy SEAL stuff of actually delivering you games that are designed to take you money. These are the worst possible free-to-play games ever. Game of War, Mobile Strike, and now Final Fantasy. So we're going to start off Final Fantasy. I'm going to do a little comparison for you. I don't think I have to play the game much. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, it's got everything similar, okay? You put in any of these games, they literally just change shit out. You could make it for any franchise ever. Want to make it for Hitman? Create your own assassin universe. You, you hire people, send them out to contracts, whatever. You can do it anywhere. Now, of course, over here, exclusive, grand, launch, special. Now, they always peddle this $7 crap. Uh, with this, you get a 4,000 gold Apple exclusive launch gift, you know, 50,000 Noctis experience points, as opposed to regular experience points, VIP points, whatever. You fucking get what they give you. It's literally the same shit that you see in every other game, all right? Some of the stuff is just similar. What is it, stone, metal, oh, gill for silver? All right, sure. Probably getting worked up. Here you gotta start off with the game over here. Noctis says, Let's make sure your new empire is safe for a while so that you'll have time to build your strength. Oh, here's fucking Cindy. Alright. She even looks skimpier in this game, I swear to God. Alright, empire banner. Uh, blah, blah. Again, you know, same shit. It's literally the same fucking gameplay. If you can look at the screen, alright... I want you to memorize this, because we're going to do a little compare, all right? Oh, my fuck. Again, it's trying to peddle this shit, ain't it? It's trying, to, it's trying to get me to buy it. You're not going to make me buy this shit. I want you to memorize this real quick. This is what the realm view looks like, all right? Memorize this real quickly, okay? Put a mental image. You know, actually, open another tab, put this video on the side, and, like, watch it side by side. Actually, don't do that. That's a terrible fucking idea. Let's <laughs> just do what you got to do, okay? If you have a mobile device, check the cancer with me. It's very easy. You can download the app and see it for you. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. You can buy the VIP. It's, it, you get speed ups, all right? It gives you like 60 of them from the start. Oh, actually, no. It gives you like a bunch of them from the start. I guarantee it. You can join the guilds, all right? There's already fucking guilds right now. Uh, you can you can check your emails. What the fuck are you, are you trying to molest me on this game? Get the fuck out of your mail. All right, you got your mail. You got all this shit. All right, you go around, you see you see the empire. This is your empire. This is where you build, like, farms, energy reactors, quarries, and mines. Remember those? And that's all about it. Now, uh, there's also... Oh, my God. Shut the fuck up, Noctis. Nobody wants to eat. Nobody cares, Noctis, all right? We're in the middle of this game. Here's your hero, Noctis Lucis Kylum. All right, you can change the hero. Uh, skills, all right? You get, you get some skills going on with AP. So you get what I'm saying here. They just took basic Final Fantasy 15 frameworks, put them into this, and expected, ooh, boy, people are gonna fall for this shit. Let's show you Game of War. See, this is Game of War, you know? If you go over here, you can you can build farms, logging camps, quarries, and mine. They literally just changed one thing out of them all. Uh, over here, you got your little town, so and down over here, you got your same fucking messages. You can go out to the realm map, or in this game, the, the, the fucking universes and whatnot. See, you get the point, all right? It's literally just a replacing the asset kind of deal with this company. Now, you might be thinking, Muda, does this really fucking warrant a video? Yeah, this is one it's going to turn to fucking rant time, too. So, I've been reading these articles on the internet by, like, you know, Polygon, Kotaku, Unilad Gaming, I think. And uh, they've been writing articles. Final Fantasy XV gets a new game, and it sucks. First of all, it's it's not a new game. Square Enix, I don't think, developed this at all. It's by a fucking, you know, people out of Machine Zone. But... 
Polygon, Kotaku, Unilad, you don't need to fucking tell us that Game of War sucks, all right? You don't need to fucking, all right? I don't know how many fucking news reporters you put behind that article, but, you know, you don't need to tell us that it sucks. We know it sucks, all right? Trust me, we've all been saying it for fucking years. The only reason these games sell is because they have an astronomically high advertising budget. They're able to get celebrities, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. They're able to get big brands like Final Fantasy behind it. With no talent of their own, they use these brands to sell the game with their same addictive bullshit they have to feed in as, as many whales, that's what the industry calls people who spend like six, seven hundred bucks on this shit, to sucker in and keep these games afloat. And they stay afloat. Game of War reportedly at one point made a million USD a month. A fucking month, ladies and gentlemen. Let me put that into fucking perspective. That's a profitable fucking venture. That's more profitable than any of those console uh, microtransaction, PC microtransactions you see. So it's no doubt that I'm not shocked that Square Enix was like, you should probably do it because they saw the money in it. They saw the green bats and they decided to go after it. This is why I'm a little tilted for this as well. Not only am I a Final Fantasy fan, but I'm kind of fucking confused as to why they decided to outsource a game like this. See, I don't have a problem playing these kind of games. I actually play them a considerable amount, to be honest. When I'm rendering a video or when I'm just at work and I got a couple minutes to kill, I'll open up, like, uh, I used to open up this Family Guy uh, town building game. And the only reason I did is because it had a connection to the source material and you got a bit of chuckles out of it and you were basically just grinding away, doing the same kind of stuff, almost as Game of War, except it looked better and I, I guess it wasn't as pushy on pimping out microtransactions to your face. Don't worry, it was. It definitely did. But it was a lot more cleaner at it and at least stuck to its source material a little bit more than this shit does. This is literally just taking slight assets and putting them into the game and just saying, oh, well, we're done, ladies and gentlemen. That's a Final Fantasy-themed uh, microtransaction blunder. Now, the thing that tilts me, too, is that this is kind of like Final Fantasy XV, like a new kingdom. Like, it's almost like in the mainline series. So... At the end of the day, it's a game that Square Enix, which already has a great mobile division, by the way. If you don't know, Square Enix makes some really fine games on the platform, but they price them up, like, really bad. Like, for example, some Final Fantasy games are like 20, 25 bucks. And yeah, they're worth it because they're big games, but they don't fly well with those prices on mobile platforms. They have a Deus Ex game, which plays like a fucking minimized version of uh, Human Revolution, but it's still good. And it's mind-blowing that when they put their mind to it, they can create a really competent mobile game. In fact, a lot of developers do it. But Square Enix could have sacrificed a couple engineers to work on an actual 3D town-building version of this game that would have probably raked in the same, if not close to the same amount of money, but looked a lot cleaner doing it. It's not that I'm against them doing this. I'm definitely not, you know? For mobile platforms, these kind of games make sense. You play on the toilet for a couple of minutes, you set your characters, do something, come back hours later, and that's it. But here, you're collaborating with people that just don't give a shit about the source material. So at the end of the day, what does this do? It basically doesn't appeal to anyone. The people that are gonna be downloading this game don't give, and people that are gonna download this game, play the fuck out of it, don't give a shit about mainline console Final Fantasy 15. At the end of the day, Final Fantasy is like a sub-brand within a brand. What I mean by that is the games don't come out that often. There's not a yearly release cycle for every Final Fantasy game. But what you do get out of Final Fantasy and what you really get hardcore out of it is a game franchise that gives you quality releases and it differentiates the gameplay to the point where it doesn't feel the same again. You, you could put in any Final Fantasy game and get different experiences out of it. The combat style might be different. The story's definitely different. The settings are different. It's its own unique game per release. So Final Fantasy XV, as you know, had a troubled development cycle. Like, we're talking Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen, which was a decade ago more than a decade ago, revealed, they fucked that up, axed it, recreated it, recreated the second recreation, and now we have FF15. Good game, but holy shit, that development cycle fucked it in the ass. So now, what I realize is Square Enix probably has to recoup as many losses as they can by releasing these kind of spin-offs, by creating anime series, by enveloping people from all walks of medium to play this game. And they make some damn good content doing it. As far as I know, Kingsglaive and Brotherhood are very good additions to the stuff. The other mobile releases they've done have been somewhat decent. They had a side-scroller brawler on the PS4 you can get for free. I think also on the Xbox One. And they have a great main game. But they fuck it up by releases like this. Because what this does is it allows this mainstream gaming media and people in general to take one good look at something like this and get a whole salty sense 
of the rest of the fucking project alongside it. Because the thing is kind of insulting. Square Enix themselves, they make some damn fine good games. A lot of developers make damn fine good games. You know, as evil as EA or any of these companies might be, when they get a good idea and they back it right, they make some damn fine good projects. Yeah, sometimes they fuck over their mainline franchises, but that's kind of to be expected at this point. Things have gotten so bloated. But when they start doing ideas like this, which sound good on a business paper, all right, but on a long-term strategy, it just kind of sullies the brand a little bit more than I kind of expect. That, and I'm still kind of pissed at this game, while I would have loved to play it, is by the same people that advertised Game of War and Mobile Strike, two of the biggest shit stains, I will say it, the biggest shit stains on the Apple and iOS, Android store, whatever you want to call it. A lot of people agree on that same principle. These games are designed to have multiple variables so you can microtransaction the shit out of them. And they cater only to people that have addictive personalities and they get behind paying six, seven hundred bucks. I'm not saying I'm against you paying six, seven hundred bucks for a fucking mobile game. If you get your dick hard to that, by all means, jerk your fucking dick off to that, okay? But when these people step the fuck in, grab good franchises, and start to fucking shit all over the brand by releasing the same cookie gutter garbage, you damn right it's gonna tilt your boy. I'm not gonna play these games, you know, especially this. If it's something like Z Girls, fuck yeah, I'll deal with it. Hell yeah, because Z Girls at least has some fucking worthiness to it. Game of War, uh, Final Fantasy 15, a new kingdom. Uh, Mobile Strike has no fucking merit to it, all right? So, uh, moral of the story, uh, go fuck yourself, m you know, Mobile Strike, all this shit, all right? I'm done with it, all right? It's terminal great crap on your phone, all right? I'm gonna delete the app real fucking quick right now, and uh, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe, just like or dislike it. Let me know what you think about this kind of stuff, and hey, share some good mobile games if you got them in the comment section below. I'll definitely give some more covers if you know what I mean. I got this fucking ninja game to cover next time, dude. It's pretty fucking dank, made on that Unity shit. It's me, Mudahar, and I am out.